the shadows. What is going on, everybody? We are back this time with some aggro. Now, I did record some of the games for this video earlier in the week, but there were some audio issues. There were some. What's the word? There were some visual issues too, and we just it just didn't feel good to put it out. Couldn't do a voiceover. We are doing a voiceover this time. I played some games earlier this week for the video and just didn't feel like coming down to record it. So the idea with this deck, and this is a little different. This is Lemon's HS's, his, uh, their, um, their aggro deck. It's a little different. This was recorded before the nerfs, but we have our standard package of, uh, stealth minions. We have the stealth package. We have secret passage for reload. We have a bunch of burn with sinister strike and eviscerate. We also top out a Janda's bear off because it's a great tempo card. And we top, and we also run knife fender, which just kind of gets there. So in the original recording, I just decimated shamans. Like I had, I went three and one against shamans. I lost one because they high rolled, which shaman did before the nerf, and they probably still do, but haven't seen any since I've been playing. Um since the since the nerfs but this first one's against a warlock and the second one is going to be against a shaman spoiler but we can see how this deck works really well so they take a value trade in a three one we still have a three three on board we're just going to go face here obviously now we have a few plays i think we're just going to we just played another the next stealth minion we're going to shadow step the great heart stage which is a really good play because one mana draw three is awesome is draw two i'm sorry is awesome and if we have mana floating, we can and that we can send in a Sinister Strike, which we should do. I don't know why we held a Sinister Strike there, but we should have just jammed it. Maybe we're kind of like worried about them just getting scared and healing. Dark Skies, so they are scared for damage, for health and minions aboard, so they are worried. The uh, Ash Tongue Slayer that we have in here is really nice because it kind of acts as like a mini cold blood if you have a stealth minion. But we're going to jam out the Knife Fender here, deal 4 damage, and we should, why, why am I not playing these um, Sinister Strikes? Those should be going face. And I think it is because I don't want them to like, maybe like worry about dropping a Galakron minion like Shula Galakron or Devoted Minion. That must feel terrible to play, a non-corrupted Cascade Disaster. Like, play one of those Shield of Galatrons or Devoted Maniacs and then heal for five. I So my thought process, if I remember correctly, is next turn I can just jam out all the Sinister Strikes, all the Eviscerates, and just deal 14, which will be lethal. Uh, they're coining... They're coining out um, Sociologist Militia. This doesn't matter. We don't really care about their Ticketus, and we're really happy they didn't heal. So we're just going to jam out 14 damage and call this one a game. This deck can win games on turn 5, 6, or 7. It's, it's ridiculous. Um, this deck does run Edwin, which has been nerfed. Edwin, I I think if we're playing this post-nerf, we're cutting Edwin for something else. I'm not quite sure what, maybe a sap. But Edwin wasn't really winning the games, to be honest. So next we got uh, Shaman. And this is the game... That kind of shows how good this was against Shaman, which is why I wanted to get out before the nerfs. So we could just kind of like show against Shaman. We had three really good games to show, but unfortunately the footage and the audio was just terrible. And as you can you can just say par for the course, Sam, and I'd like shrug and agree with you. But uh yeah, so our our, our opening hand's really, really bad here. Like it's pretty slow. And they get a one, a two-one. Which isn't the worst thing in the world. Us not having coin kind of sucks. Another secret passage is not what we're looking for. We're going to take the value trade with the 2-1, the Sludge Slurper, and then kind of pass. That's all we can do. So I think next turn, if we don't draw anything, we really have to go into secret passage just to dig for something. A stealth minion for this Greyheart Sage. We can always take this value trade really well. We're not worried about that. Yeah. So we're going to secret passage here. Hope to find something playable. And we do in the war get an Infiltrator, we get a Swindle. Swindle's a great card on this list. There are turns where you just go Foxy, Swindle, and draw damage. It's phenomenal. But we clear their board. We have some draw lined up. Actually, we have a draw four lined up because we can Shadow Step this Greyheart Sage like last game. But the idea with Shaman is we really just want to get them before... 
they did us with their nonsense weapons. And that is unfortunate because now we can't draw cards. So I end up, I think I end up Secret Passage. Yeah, Secret Passage again. Our hand is just pretty trash. Sinister Strike is fine, Knife Vendor, we're not really looking for. Hook Scimitar and Spy Mistress. Uh, you could make a case for playing this Hook Scimitar here. Uh, I don't think you'd be wrong. You can take a value trade and push two. I think we're really just looking for following up the next turn, having a play in Greyheart Sage to draw us cards. But yeah, keeping Shaman off the board so they don't get the weapon is really good. Unfortunately, they will get the weapon by the time we can kind of get our plan online. But the Shaman, luckily, doesn't really look like he has much of a plan. Which is fine. And I think when I was recording, I was just saving the Shadow Steps for the Knife Vendor. Because if you Shadow Step Knife Vendor, it ends up being 8-12 damage, which is phenomenal. So we're going to draw two cards. We could Eviscerate this. I think we end up taking the value trade here. In retrospect, I think we do want to just eviscerate this and go face. But maybe maybe I was thinking save it for burst. It's kind of hard to tell. There's Edwin. Three cost Edwin. Dodged so many nerfs. And I guess I guess we don't really need the eviscerate because we do have follow-up with another stealth minion. We can we can push some damage. We take the minion off the board. We can save four damage for later. It, it's fine. It's it's fine. So I think they're in a bit of an awkward position. If they just play the weapon, they're not doing anything with it. They play rabbits. They're kind of... It's really not a quality turn. They have to kind of wait. They do end up playing Pitmaster, which is more stats than rabbits, as well as the rush. So it looks like they don't have the broom, which is good for us. It keeps our game plan um, active, but it makes us have to value trade damage that we want to be sending face. We get a second hook scimitar. Again, really good card. So we end up playing the... I believe we're playing the Worgen here first. So we can push... I think Edwin actually comes in clutch here because we do make... I think we end up making a big Edwin to put more pressure on the board, which I think is a really nice pivot of this deck since it doesn't rely on getting Edwin out on turn... Two, one or two. <laughs> um, it it kind of relies on using Edwin as kind of this pressure tool rather than a, a non-game maker tool, which isn't very fun. But it looks like we actually did go with the weapon there. I think I think that's a better play. I don't know if it's a better play, but I think it's a play that is also working towards our game plan of get them to zero, and they're at 25 and it's turn six. Much different than the last game we just played. They get a fire heart here. I'm not really sure what they can get off fire heart that's going to save them too much. Server Shine Portal actually probably does it. Uh, they, they got there, Edwin! <laughs> while they're, while they're uh, discovering their spells, I do want to remind you guys, I do link where I get my music for these videos in the description. They all come from Chill Out Media. If you're a content creator, or want to um, just listen to good jams. Uh, Chill Out Media is awesome. So we drew another Eviscerate here, and I think at this point we're like, I was, I was, I was thinking, I was thinking uh, that we might just start going all face. But it looks like that's not the case. I'm trying to think of what happens here. It's been a few days, so I do apologize that my memory is foggy. I'm old, I'm 26, it's difficult to remember. We're shadow stepping looks like we're going to the Edwin this turn. So we're shadow stepping the uh, Worgen. I'm going to eviscerate their Edwin just so they don't have anything on board. We'll play the 3 1, the sneaky delinquent, and then play an 8 8, a 10 10 Edwin. And that does not look good for them. And I think because they don't have their weapon, because they don't have a revolve. Edwin's just good if he can't be silenced, right? <laughs> There's a reason he's getting Hall of Fame this year. They finally get the weapon. It looks like that was a top deck. But it just doesn't... It's not going to matter. Um, they can push five. We can follow up with deal with the Knife Vendor and the Hook Scimitar. 
I think they're really hoping that we get they get some sort of taunt or a doomsayer, which is why they have two one drop minions, but it's not gonna matter. We have five, ten. They don't know that we have another um, eight on board. Because we're gonna push five. 15 plus 8 is exactly lethal at 23. And that's... Knife Fighter is not in this deck because it's a great card. It's in there because it just closes games out so, so well. So guys, with that, uh, this has been a shorter one. I wish it was longer. wish I had more games of this, but a lot of the files were bad. But guys, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.